Okay, today is the day we are going to do I factorial. Yes, the I factorial that so many of you guys have been asking for. And let's just jump right into it. First of all, of course, we cannot just use the regular definition for factorial. You know the one, n factorial is equal to n times n minus 1 times dot 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 times 2 times 1. No, that's the baby version. Today, we have to use the dough version for this, right? So, to extend the concept of factorial, we have to use the integral. And let me just write this down right here for you guys. Right here, we know that if we have x factorial, we can use that as an uh, integral. But since we have i, which is a complex number, let me write down z. So z factorial, this right here, we can write it as the integral from 0 to infinity, t to the z's power, times e to the negative t dt. And this right here is just from the gamma function or the, from the pi function, and you end up with this integral anyway. So this is how you can extend the factorial. So in order for you to make sense of i factorial, we will have to use this. And all the links will be in the description for you guys to see how we can come with this. OK, so from here, we can just plug in i into the z's. So we get i factorial being the integral from 0 to infinity. And here we will have t to the i's power, e to the negative t dt. So this is very nice. However, though, <laughs> This is not only an improper integral, but also complex, because we have t to the i's power. So how can we deal with this? Don't worry, let me show you. Let me just write it down right here for you guys. Now, let's take a look of t to the i's power. As you all know, we don't like to work with space t. We like to work with space e. So first, let me look at t as e to the ln t's power. Why? Because you see, e and ln cancel, we get the t back. And then I still need to have the i's power. So let's take both sides to the i's power here. And as you can see right here, e to the ln t to the i's power, we can just multiply the powers. So we get e to the i times ln t right here. And the beauty of this is that this is in the form of e to the i theta. So we can just use the Euler's formula, taking theta to be ln t. In other words, we get cosine of theta, which is ln t, and we add i times sine of ln t, like this, which is very nice, very nice, isn't it? And I will just come back here for t to the i's power. I will just replace that. And don't forget, we still have to multiply e to the negative t power. So we just have to multiply this and that and all that stuff. So, let's see. Right here, let me write it down. We have the integral from 0 to infinity. So, we do e to the negative t times this guy, which is e to the negative t times cosine of ln t. Like this. And let me close this integral right here. So, put on dt. And the next, I will have to add. For the second part, we have the i. And let's just take that to the front. And we have the integral from 0 to infinity and e to the t negative t power times this. So we have e to the negative t times sine of ln t now, like that. From here, as you can see, this right now is real. So is this. And you multiply with i. So of course, this is the real part and this is the complex part. Well. We fixed the complex situation for this integral, but this is still an improper integral at two places. The first place is, of course, you have the infinite interval, the infinity right here. But this right here is not that bad to fix, because if you think about it, if you plug infinity into the t and the t here, e to the negative t you know, is going to be approaching 0. And this is just like you know, at most 1. Even though you have ln infinity, but cosine of that is at most 1 anyway. Technically, you have to use the square theorem to prove it, but it's not a time to talk about proof because you guys want to talk about the i factorial, right? So I just want to tell you guys that this right here, it converges when you have uh, t goes to infinity. But what happens if t is approaching 0? Take a look right here. If you put 0, technically 0 plus, because we have ln t, so if you put 0 plus right here, inside you get negative infinity. Cosine of negative infinity, once again, it's going to be either 1 or negative 1. Just keep up and down, right? 
Well, it's, we don't have a limit for that. Unfortunately, this time, if you put 0 right here, you get e to the negative 0, which is just 1 in all. So, you will have to worry about if this right here converges, if when, n, when t goes to 0 plus. But the truth is, yes, it does. And let me just show you guys a real quick sketch for the picture. So the idea is that when you move away, the amplitude program becomes zero like this. So you don't have area anymore. And you have some area like this maybe, okay? And then when you're approaching zero from the right-hand side, what's happening is that it's going to be going up so fast like this. Why? Because this right here goes to negative infinity instead of the cosine. And you pretty much have all this. And the thing is that each and every little up and down, <laughs> the distance between them, the width between them, it's approaching zero, pretty much zero. Even though, and then, and then the height is at most one. So it's like zero times one, so it's zero. So you pretty much don't have area. So that's how you can kind of just look at it and you say, okay, that's actually convergent. So well, the point is that this right here will give us a finite value. And with that being said, you can just use, yes, Simpson's rule. And you can just maybe use a proper integral to approximate this. So you can do the integral maybe from 0 0.001 and up to 1,000, up to you, right? And then just look at this. Of course, the input have to be the same. And use Simpson's rule right here and then do the approximation. And same thing right here, right? So, after you've done all that, I will tell you guys the answer is approximately 0 0.4980156. This is for this integral right here, and of course you have more numbers after that. And for this right here, you actually end up with a negative value, so we have to subtract. And the value right here is approximately 0 0.1549498, and so on, so on, so on. In the end, don't forget the i. So the idea is that when you have i factorial, you end up with a very nice complex number right here. So I think that's really cool. For the people who ask me for the i factorial, hopefully this is good enough. Anyway, that's it. If you guys are new to the channel, though, be sure to subscribe. Thank you.